In a neon-bathed future where the rich bio-augment themselves, a young woman survives on the streets with illegally installed clockwork wings. But when she gets caught up in the heist of a lifetime, she must join a crew of eccentric thieves on a daring mission to rob the most heavily augmented man on Earth. A job that will either make her soar or drop her straight into a bio-augmented hell. Nix wove through the back alleys of Neo Amsterdam, one eye on the sky. She was on her way to see Rax, but she couldn't shake the feeling she was being followed. Ever since lifting that strange trinket, she'd noticed flickers of movement during her flights, shadows tailing just out of sight. She just needed to make it to Rax's shop undetected. He had connections all over the city's criminal underworld. If anyone could help her shake the agents on her tail, it was him. Nick slipped down a deserted side street, glancing cautiously upward. As she neared Rax's secreted entrance, she felt a rush of air and heard the distinct snap of unfolding wings. Nix dove for cover in a doorway as a figure landed gracefully where she had just been standing. Turning, Nix found herself face to face with a tall, raven-haired woman. Her lips quirked into a smile that didn't reach her cold, augmentation-blackened eyes. Nix, right? The girl with the wings. Nix hesitated. The woman looked too sleek and well-equipped to be any kind of street thief. Who wants to know? Nix replied carefully. The woman laughed. I'm Raven. I think you have something I need. Nix's hand went instinctively to her pocket where the metal trinket was hidden. Raven's gaze tracked the gesture. Nix's mind raced. Raven clearly wasn't with Prometheus, but could she be trusted? Footsteps echoed from the alley behind them before Nix could reply. She spun to see three new figures approaching, a tall, wiry man with spiked cybernetic implants running up his bald head and down his arms, Jackdaw. Beside him, an individual completely cloaked in black carbon fiber armor, Crow, and a shorter girl with a wild mane of red hair and hefty metallic limbs, Magpie. Nix stiffened. This was Raven's infamous crew specialists in elite corporate espionage and theft. Crow stepped forward, voice a grating electronic growl filtered through a modulator. Let's make this simple. Hand over the artifact. Nix hesitated. She was outnumbered and outmatched. But she suspected the trinket was valuable if this infamous crew was after it. And her last bargaining chip for access to Rax's underworld connections Follow me, Nick said, gesturing over her shoulder. They needed privacy to negotiate. She led the crew toward Rax's shop, the back door still within reach. Magpie attempted to grab Nix's shoulder, but she shrugged the girl off. No tricks, Raven warned. We only want the artifact. Nix didn't reply. As they turned the corner into the alley with the hidden door, she made a snap decision. In one smooth motion... She ripped the trinket from her pocket and slapped it onto the lock pad. With a click and a hiss, the door slid open and Nix dove through, slamming it shut behind her and entering the passcode to lock the crew out. She heard their angry shouts, muffled behind the steel door, but she was safe for now. Nix found herself in a dingy storage room, the smell of grease and black market tech thick in the air. She slipped through a side door into Rax's workshop, just as the big man looked up from his workbench. Rax. Nix. What the hell is going on? Rax demanded. His expression grew alarmed at the sound of banging on the outer door. No time to explain, Nix said hurriedly. Some kind of elite crew is tailing me. Wanted this thing I stole. She held up the trinket. Rax's eyes widened. Ah, hell. Is that what I think it is? Before Nix could ask what he meant, the banging ceased, replaced by the sound of something powering up. A moment later, a blast resounded, and the main shop door blew inward off its hinges. Raven stalked through the smoking doorway, followed closely by her crew. Nix shifted into a fighting stance, but Rax held up a hand. Wait, clearly we all need to chat. He turned to Raven. I take it this is about the Jacondor artifact? Raven crossed her arms. That trinket belongs to my client. But perhaps we can broker a deal. Rax grinned. 
Now you're talking sense. The artifact for a cut of the payment, plus Nix here, gets to join up with your crew. Do we have a bargain? Nix started to protest, but Raven cut her off. Deal. I was going to bring the girl along anyway. Her skills could be useful. Nix looked between Raven and Rax incredulously, but it was clear the decision had been made for her. Joining up with Raven's elite team of thieves was her ticket out of this mess. Rax pulled Nix aside, his expression grave. Watch yourself out there. I suspect that artifact is the key to something huge and highly illegal. Don't trust anyone. Nix grimaced, glancing back at the imposing thieves. She palmed the trinket, her armored wings twitching anxiously behind her as she steeled her nerves. This was her chance to run with the big leagues of Neo Amsterdam's underworld. But something told her this job was going to be more dangerous than she ever could have imagined. Squaring her shoulders, Nix turned to face her new partners in crime. She tossed the trinket to Raven, who caught it deftly. All right, I'm in, Nix said, holding the other woman's gaze. Let's go pull off a heist. Raven's lips curved into a razor-sharp smile. She turned on her heel and strode out without another word, clearly expecting Nix and the rest to follow. Taking a deep breath, Nix fell into step behind the crew. Whatever came next, she knew her old life as a small-time thief in the city was over. As they stepped out onto the neon-washed streets and Raven snapped open her sleek black wings, Nix had no choice but to let her stolen artifact and newfound partners guide her into the shadows of the chrome-obsessed underworld. She was in deep now, tied to Raven's dangerous plans for the trinket. But as the crew took flight over the gleaming high-rises of Neo Amsterdam, Nix felt her heart race with the twin thrills of fear and freedom. The city sprawled below her, lit up like countless cybernetic augmentations wired together pulsing with life. Somewhere down there, Prometheus was searching for her. But up here, she was untouchable. They flew until the corporate district faded behind them, the lights dimming as they entered decrepit industrial outskirts. Nix wasn't surprised when Raven angled them down toward an abandoned factory with a rooftop modified into a helipad. They touched down one after the other, and Crow keyed open a heavy bulkhead door. The team filed inside, their footfalls echoing through the cavernous space. Raven snapped her fingers, and the overhead lights flickered on, illuminating the hideout. The factory interior had clearly been converted into a high-tech base of operations, though it still bore signs of disuse and decay. Banks of monitors and equipment lined the walls. Workbenches held neat rows of tools and half-disassembled tech. Nix's sharp gaze picked out the small, personal touches throughout. Magpie's brightly colored hammock strung up by a workbench, Jackdaw's small, modular refrigerator humming in a corner with his name scrawled on. Make yourself at home. Raven's voice shook Nix from her observations. We'll be heading out at 0400 hours to retrieve the prototype. Prototype? Nix questioned. Raven crossed to one of the workbenches, placing down the trinket and pulling up a 3D hologram blueprint of a complex mechanical device. This, she explained, is the Jockendor artifact. Combined with Prometheus's newest augmentation prototype, it has intriguing capabilities. Our client will pay handsomely for both. Nix studied the slowly rotating blueprint projection. She still didn't fully understand what this mysterious device did, but one thing was clear. Stealing it from Prometheus would be insane. As if reading her thoughts, Jackdaw clapped Nix on the shoulder, his narrow face splitting into a grin that looked more unhinged than reassuring. Don't worry, girlie. We've hit harder targets than this before. You stick with us and you'll get your piece of the prize. With that, he sauntered off to his workbench, picking up some partially disassembled tech. Nix watched him go before turning back to... Nix landing lightly on the roof of the Prometheus headquarters, her clockwork wings folding silently behind her. The others touched down beside her, Raven turning to address the crew. Jackdaw, disable the perimeter security. Crow, get the door. Nix with me. They moved swiftly into position. 
Jackdaw plugged into a security panel, his augmented limbs twitching. After a few moments, he gave a thumbs up. Meanwhile, Crow set a set of charges around the rooftop door, detonating them with a muffled boom. The thick steel blew inward, and Crow slipped inside. Raven entered behind Crow, summoning Nyx to follow with a tilt of her head. Moving into the dim halls, they wound through a maze of corridors and down a flight of stairs until arriving at a set of double doors marked Authorized Personnel Only. Raven nodded to Crow, who stepped forward and punched a code into the keypad. The doors hissed open, revealing a cavernous room housing rows of strange machinery. At the room's center sat an imposing metal vault. This is it, Raven murmured. Let's get that prototype. They approached the vault door. Crow cracked his mechanically augmented knuckles before entering another code. Gears whirred as the thick bolts disengaged and the door swung open with a puff of pressurized air. Nix peered inside. The vault was lined with shelves of gleaming chrome artifacts and tech, but her gaze snagged on a small, unassuming black case. Raven reverently picked it up and opened it. Inside, nestled in foam, was a tiny glass vial filled with microscopic silver particles swirling with eerie life. Nanites, Nyx breathed. She'd heard the rumors. Prometheus was developing a nanoparticle mind control system that could override human thought and behavior. But to see proof here before her was chilling. Come, we need to move. Raven tucked the case securely into her coat. They emerged from the vault to find Jack, Daw, and Crow waiting expectantly. Raven gave them a subtle nod and Nyx detected an air of relief from the crew. The message was understood. They had the prototype. Let's blow this joint, Jackdaw said eagerly. He spun on his heel, only to come face to face with a squadron of Prometheus security agents that had emerged silently from the hall. Going somewhere? Their chrome-plated leader growled. Jackdaw leapt backward with a yelp as the agents advanced, prosthetic limbs shifting into weapons. Raven's crew responded instantly, Crow's arm transforming into a high-caliber energy blaster, while Magpie detonated EMP devices that disabled nearby security droids. It was chaos. Nix's combat training took over as she spun and kicked, her artificial musculature letting her take down opponents twice her size. She lost track of the others in the brawl until a shout rang out. Raven! Nix whirled to see the prototype case lying broken open on the floor. Vile smashed. The silver nanites roiled, spreading quickly as they sought out technological hosts to assimilate and control. With horror, Nix watched the nanoparticles swarm into the damaged security bots, the droids sparking back to ominous life with jerky, unnatural movements. Soon they turned on the remaining agents, who cried out in dismay as the nanites invaded their augmented bodies and hijacked their mechanical limbs. We have to contain this now, Raven ordered. She pulled an emergency blast shield down over the broken vial, slowing the spread. We'll come back for a sample once we deal with this mess. Nix knew Raven was right. The infected agents clearly couldn't be saved or safely removed from the building until the rogue nanites were neutralized. Though it pained her, she helped Jackdaw and Magpie barricade the exits. They had to quarantine this. Soon the facility was contained. Panting, Nix turned to Raven. What now? Raven's expression was grim as the mind-controlled droids gathered ominously on the other side of the shielded doors. Now? Now we run. They escaped up through the facility as the outbreak spread below them, the eerie whirring of infected augments echoing in their wake. When they reached the rooftop, Nix froze. My wings! The nanites roiled menacingly near the access door. If those tiny machines got into her delicate mechanisms, she'd be under their control in moments. Raven grabbed her arm, snapping out her own sleek wings. You'll have to ride with me. Hurry! They took off into the night sky, Jackdaw and Magpie flanking them. Nix clung tightly to Raven, head tucked against the wind. Risking a glance downward, Nix saw the first wave of infected agents spill onto the roof in pursuit.
wings and jetpacks propelling them unnaturally fast. We've got company, Nick shouted over the wind. Raven cursed. We need to take these things out before they spread further. They split up, desperately trying to evade their pursuers. Crow blasted one from the sky while Magpie dropped an EMP grenade, disabling two more. But the horde kept coming. Raven swooped low, skimming just above the neon-lit streets. They zipped through tightly packed buildings in an attempt to shake their tail. Still, the clouds of rogue nanites clung to their trail. Suddenly, Raven pulled up sharply. Nix craned her head around. They were boxed into a dead-end alley, the Prometheus swarm closing in. I have an idea, but it's risky, Raven said. On my signal, point your wings straight up. Nix nodded, tensing. The possessed agents descended toward them, hands morphing grotesquely into weapons. Now! Raven shouted. Nix snapped her wings vertical, bracing herself as Raven rolled them into a dizzying dive straight down. Wind roared in her audio implants. At the last second, Raven pulled up, skimming low enough that Nix's steel feathers scraped the ground painfully before they ascended. Behind them came a cacophony of crashes as several nanite-possessed agents slammed into the pavement, but some still followed. Raven grimaced. This ends tonight. She turned them back toward the towering Prometheus building. The remaining infected agents pursued them upward. Higher and higher they climbed. Be ready to detach, Raven yelled. They ascended past sleek towers into the upper atmosphere. Suddenly Raven detached her grip on Nyx. Now! Nyx furled her wings tight and plummeted. The agents fixed unerringly on her trail as Raven slipped away unseen. The pavement raced up to meet her. At the last possible second, Nyx wrenched her wings open with a scream of straining metal. She shot forward just shy of the ground as the infected agents behind her crashed in a plume of sparks and shrapnel. Nyx tumbled to the rain-slicked street, gasping for breath. All around her lay the shattered remains of the assimilated Prometheus security team. The threat was neutralized. One small thing was certain, Nyx thought grimly. After tonight, she was going to need much more than minor black market repairs on her battered wings. Because the run-in with Prometheus's rogue nanites was just the beginning. The path Raven and her crew dragged her down was only getting darker. Nick stood watch, eyes scanning the neon-lit Neo-Amsterdam skyline. Inside the abandoned factory, Raven and the rest of the crew were quarantined trying to remove any remaining nanites from their augmented bodies after the disastrous heist. They'd escaped with a vial of the dangerous particles, though the prototype's destruction had still unleashed an outbreak. Until Raven confirmed they were safe, they couldn't risk further contamination. A flicker of movement caught Nix's eye. She turned to see a dark shape dropping toward the helipad. Magpie. The girl's bulky, mechanized legs absorbed the impact of her landing. All clear? Nix asked hopefully. Magpie shook her head, face grim. No sign of the nanites, but no way to be sure. Raven says we need to lay low. Nix sighed in frustration. Prometheus was certainly searching for them, yet they were stuck here hiding. As if summoned by her thoughts, the rhythmic chop of rotor blades echoed through the night. Nix's gut twisted. Company! she said tersely. Magpie spun, curses spilling from her lips as she spotted the approaching gunships. Prometheus drones! They must have tracked us! Magpie exclaimed. She turned and waved frantically, signaling the others. Raven, Jackdaw, and Crow spilled from the hideout door, wings and weapons at the ready. Inside now! Raven ordered. They piled back through the doorway. Crow triggered the heavy blast door just as the gunships opened fire, bullets sparking along the metal. That door won't hold long, Jackdaw said. He crossed to a control panel, entering commands. I'll mask our heat sigs, make us ghost. Above the groaning door came the sound of metal on metal as the drones latched on. A shape charge detonated with a bang, peeling back the steel. They're through, Nick shouted. Raven grabbed the prototype vial and slipped it into her jacket. Time to disappear. Jackdaw, cut the lights. 
The hideout went dark. Nix's ocular implants automatically switched to night vision. They retreated from the main room as the drones forced the door open. Moving through the halls, Nix heard the heavy footfalls of the drones searching the factory. She tried to calm her racing pulse, hoping the heat masker would conceal them. Ahead, Raven signaled them to a side passage, their escape route. One by one, they slipped into the drafty maintenance tunnel. Magpie entered last, pulling the grate closed behind them. They moved as swiftly as they dared through the cramped space. After an agonizing stretch, Nix spotted the exit ladder leading up to the city streets. She started to climb, movement stiff from the tight space. Reaching the surface, Nix lifted the manhole cover. The street appeared deserted, but a drone chopper roared by overhead, searchlights raking the area. No doubt the entire district was swarming with them. Raven climbed out beside her. We need to split up, she said grimly. Rendezvous at the fallback point. The others nodded. This was their best chance to shake the drones. Nix took off alone, sticking to the shadows. The sound of pursuit seemed to follow her no matter what twists and turns she took through the back alleys. A spotlight swept toward her. Nix ducked behind a dumpster, cursing internally. Her wings ached to open, yearning to take her far from here. But she didn't dare risk drawing the drone's attention. She slipped from her hiding spot, only to find herself staring down the barrel of a drone's gun. Human, you are ordered to stand down. It intoned robotically, weapon unwavering. Behind it, more drones closed in. Nix acted on instinct, lunging forward. She slid beneath the drone's legs, springing up to grip its weaponized arm. Her augmented muscles strained as she tried to wrest the gun away. The drone attempted to shake her off metal limbs pounding toward her. Nix twisted the gun with a grunt of effort. It discharged with a series of bangs, shots going wide but forcing the other drones to dive for cover. Nix used the distraction to wrench the gun fully free. She swung up onto the drone's shoulders and snapped its head to the side with a vicious torque. It collapsed, circuits shorting out. Leaping free of the falling drone, Nix discarded the empty gun and sprinted down the alley. More searchlights converged toward the commotion. She nearly sobbed in relief when she spotted a downed power line laying sparking across the alley ahead. Skidding to a stop, Nix planted her hands on it, crying out as electricity surged up her cybernetic arms, blowing out her systems. The lights in her optics sputtered and died, leaving her in darkness. Sparks erupted along the drones as they were hit with the arcing current. Nix forced her fused limbs to drag her behind cover. She leaned against the wall, venting hard. With her augmented eyes shorted out, she was literally blind. But she couldn't let that stop her. Switching her optics to reboot, Nix pushed off the wall and stumbled onward, using touch, heading in the general direction of the rendezvous point. The city was a shapeless blur around her. Gradually, her optic systems came back online. The alley came into focus. Nix nearly wept with relief, until she spotted more drones advancing from both ends of the passage, cutting off her escape. She was trapped. Nix backed up against a wall, gears in her wings twitching anxiously. The lead drone raised its weapon. Surrender, human, it intoned robotically. You are under arrest. Nix steeled herself as she prepared to make a suicidal run at them. But before she could move, a segmented metal limb shot over her shoulder, smashing the lead drone's head to bits. Nix turned to see Magpie behind her, the girl's face set in a wild grin. Thought you could use some backup. With her armor and heavy limbs, Magpie made short work of the remaining drones. Soon they stood panting amid the smoking wreckage. Magpie clasped Nix's shoulder. Come on, we need to move before more arrive. Nix simply nodded, adrenaline still flooding her system. They slipped away into the shadows, making their way cautiously to the rendezvous point. One by one, the team reconnected in the deserted warehouse. Seeing them all in one piece, Nix finally allowed herself to relax. Raven wasted no time. The client wants to move up the meat. We'll hand off the goods and get our payment tonight. She focused on Nix. 
Once we get clear of the city, you and those fancy wings will lead us out. Apprehension flickered through Nix. The job wasn't over yet, but she'd come too far to back out now. She nodded. Let's finish this. Nick stood motionless, eyes closed, letting the heavy rain wash over her. The storm drowned out the neon glow of the city behind them. Ahead, the Black River churned. This was the meeting point Raven had set with their mysterious client to hand over the goods, the Jacondor artifact and the stolen vial of dangerous Prometheus nanites. Their payment waited on the opposite bank. Nix tried to ignore the twist of unease in her gut. The client hadn't shown their face during the chaotic theft. Raven insisted it was safer for everyone that way, but something felt off about this final exchange. She opened her eyes as Raven approached. He's here, Raven nodded. Give me the case. Nix unslung the satchel containing the artifact and prototype from her shoulder, handing it over reluctantly. She watched as Raven stepped onto the water's rocky bank holding the case aloft. For several heartbeats, nothing happened. Then a sleek watercraft detached itself from the shadows of the opposite bank, its electric engine silent as it slipped across the current. It came to a gentle stop before Raven. A lone figure stood aboard the craft behind tinted glass. Raven held out the case wordlessly. The man extended a prosthetic limb outfitted with a storage compartment. Raven placed the goods inside and it snapped shut, retracting into his arm. In return, he transmitted something on a cryptograph. Raven glanced at the code and nodded. Their payment had been received. A pleasure doing business with you, the man said, his voice oddly modulated. Before Raven could react, the boat was slipping away into the rain, their client and his newly acquired cargo disappearing back into the night. Raven turned from the water's edge, tension leaving her shoulders. It was done. Nix moved to join her, then froze at the sound of boots splashing through puddles behind them. She whirled to see armored figures emerging from concealment, weapons leveled, an ambush. You didn't really think I wouldn't come for what is mine? Nix's gut dropped as she recognized the voice. The client stepped forward, water beating along his augments. In his hands, he held the case, still sealed tight. A decoy, Raven hissed. You bastard. The money? Oh, it's been transferred, but not to your accounts. The client grinned cruelly. Thank you for returning my technology. The outbreak allowed me to collect so many more viable subjects. The nanites. Nix was hit with horrified understanding. He had orchestrated all of this just to get his hands on more test subjects from the streets. And now he had two prizes the artifact, and the new sample of his mind-control tech. Raven lunged, but sleek drones shot from the water, seizing her. The others cried out as more drones grabbed them in a crushing grip. Even Nix's powerful wings strained uselessly against the machine's grip. Their client chuckled as they were forced to their knees before him. He held up the new vial, swirling it gently. Don't worry. You'll still aid my aim to improve humanity. Nix thrashed, but the drone's hold was unbreakable. This couldn't be how it ended. Forced to become a mindless slave to this madman's experiments. Around her, the others had gone unnervingly still. Nix followed their gaze. The client had turned to secure the case inside his coat. Across his shoulders, a name was stenciled onto his armor. Crow. In a flash, Nix understood. This wasn't their client, it was Crow. He must have intercepted the real man back on the boat somehow. Raven met Nix's gaze and gave an almost imperceptible nod. Nix went limp, hoping the drones would interpret it as surrender. Crow turned back toward her, vial raised to infect her first. As he leaned in close, Raven struck like a viper, lunging free of the distracted drone's grip to latch onto Crow's arm. Before he could react, she had plunged a dagger up through the weak point under his jaw, piercing his skull. Crow shuddered once, then collapsed, vile slipping free to shatter on the rocks. The drones froze in place, no longer receiving direction from their fallen master. In unison, Raven's crew ripped free, 
quickly disabling the machines. Nix sagged with relief and exhaustion. It was over at last. Raven cleaned her blade, expression unreadable. Nix knew Crow had been her friend once, before his obsession with power and control twisted him. Wordlessly, they gave his remains to the swirling river. As the first hints of dawn lightened the sky, Nix turned to Raven. What now? Raven glanced back at the city. Now we disappear, before Crow's masters realize what happened. She extended a hand to Nix. Come with us. You've earned that. Nix clasped Raven's hand firmly. Together they stepped into the rushing water, letting the current carry them away from New Amsterdam and its deadly games of power. They traveled until the city was a glittering speck behind them. Eventually they would pick new identities, new lives. But for now, Nix was content to simply be free under the open sky. She unfurled her wings, letting the fresh air currents catch the steel feathers. No masters or handlers, no one to give her orders or tell her who to be, just the wide open future ahead. As the crew took flight around her, Nix finally allowed herself to hope. With her newfound family at her side, she could go anywhere from here. The past could burn away like fog under the rising sun. Nix beat her wings powerfully, climbing into the crimson-streaked sky as she raced toward the coming dawn. Wherever it took her, she was never looking back. Thank you very much for listening. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this story. Subscribe if you loved it.